Good day everyone, we are the group 10 and our topic is all about the Maritime Navigation Radar. Here are the members, Theodore Ralph James R., Uduan Christian, Unabia Erlin May, and Varga Donis. Intended learning outcomes. At the end of the session, the students shall be able to comprehend the history of Maritime Navigation Radar. Second is to determine why radar is such a valuable tool. And last is to recognize the ship parameters. History. New technologies of radar become available to merchant shipping with the end of hostil hostilities in 1945. Radar on merchant ships was initially installed for commercial purposes. First is on ferries to maintain better schedules in fog. And second is for large fishing vessels. Radar was treated with great suspicion by the mariners. With improve, improving technology, and after some time, the use of radar for safety purposes was recognized. Misinterpretation of radar information had not resulted in any reduction of the number of serious collision at sea. International Conference on Safety of Life at Sea, 1960, revised international regulations for preventing collisions at sea by adding rules to take account of the use of radar and recommendations on the use of radar information as an aid to avoiding collisions at sea. The International Conference of, on Safety of Life at Sea in 1974 adopted provisions to SOLAS Convention, making a radar mandatory car car carriage requirement for merchant ships in a phase program starting in 1980, which finally completed in 2002. So to continue the report, may I call on the Cadet Tutuan. Thank you, the Cadet Yatero. So... Slide number eight is the credit letter. So SOLAS requirements. So first, all merchant ships of 300 gross tonnage and over now shall carry a radar and, ma and many carry two. IMO adopted performance standards for marine radars, which are used in connection or integration with other navigational equipment required to carry on board ships such as an automated target tracking aid, ARPA, AIS, ECDIS, GNS, and others. So, non-solo ships. Many small craft also carry radar voluntarily as manufacturers have pro produced cost-effective designs for their needs. The shipmaster's point of view. The key facts are the radar remains and will remain the primary system for collision avoidance and radar is a very important tool for navigation. Why is radar such a valuable tool? First, the master and watchkeepers have confidence in information radar pro provides because its operation in ship base. It's not reliant on third party sources. It has a proven track record and radar is useful with SARTs when engaged in search and rescue. In its display, radar offers the watchkeepers the basic reality of all targets related to the ship. It therefore aids the watchkeepers and help in decision making for both navigation aid and collision avoidance. In collision avoidance, early action is required to avoid a close quarter situation. Therefore, early identification of closing targets is essential. Watch keeping officers need to be competent in the use of radar and trained in its use and application of ARPA. So to further more add information, let me call um, Dekadet Unabia. Dekadet Unabia. So, um, 
Thank you, Decadet Utuhan. So some IMO requirements needs to have a maximum emergency stopping distance from full speed of the ship that should not be more than 15 ships in length and emergency should be more than that more than 2.5 ships in length. Next slide, please. So in ship uh, need to be up to 25 knots and the land would be la the largest container ship would be 335 meters and the capsized bulker is 300 meters and the panamax is 220 to 230 meters and also the emergency stopping distance is 3.3 kilometers to 5 kilometers and the emergency turning radius is 550 meters to 840 meters and lastly the displacement weights would be 100,000 to 250,000 tons next slide please so the practical requirements to start plotting targets and determining their course and speed with a target is between 8 and 10 nautical miles off. Next slide, please. So in navigation, the radar gives accurate information on the distance from the charted features and assists in maintaining the ship's course. So the radar will normally show a 60 meter high and landmass at a range of 20 miles. So this is considered by the seafarers as a minimum requirement. The radar greatly assists the navigation during poor visibility. And the pilots rely on radar at close range and reduced visibility to pass buoys and beacons. Next slide. So this is the table where you can see the MC, MSC 192. Next slide, please. And here we can see our radar. Next slide. So discrimination of targets from a watchkeeper's per perspective. So you need to be able to distinguish a tug from its tow to at sea at 12 miles range. And also approaching a rig on a supply vessel to clearly identify the standby boat from the rig at 6 miles range. And to be able to distinguish the anchor pendant boys of a semi-submersible rig at 3 miles range. So this is what I mean. So the next presenter would be Decadet Varga. All right. Um, thank you so much, Kedat and Abdullah. Okay, so to start, resolution MSC 1972 79 or 551 range. The radar system should be capable of displaying two joint, two point rather, targets on the same bearing separated by 40 meters in range as two distinct objects. 5.5.2 bearing says the radar system should be capable of displaying two point targets in the same range, separated by 2.5 degrees in bearing as to distinct objects. Next slide, please. And um, 5.4 minimum range says, with own ship at zero speed and antenna height of 15 meters above the sea level and in calm conditions, the navigational buoy in Table 2 should be detected at a minimum horizontal range of 40 meters from the antenna position and up to a range of 1 nautical mile without changing the setting of control functions other than the range scale selector. Slide please. In engineering terms, resolution ITU-R M.1313 power 30 to 70 kilowatt hours, horizontal beam width of 0 0.5 to 4 degrees, a pulse with 0 0.03 to 1.2 microseconds PRF of 4,000 to 375 hertz and noise figure to 3.3 to 8 decibels. Next slide, please. And then, uh, the pitch should be 3 degrees, the roll should be 25 degrees, the yaw should be 5 degrees, and so the vertical beam width should be 20 to 30 degrees. Okay, here we can see an example of an X ray band radar and a sphero band radar. And shown in the chart as uh, Waypoint HB report on November 3, here we can see some of the activities that are being shown in the graph. You can see, next slide please. And here is the uh, radar, radar recording of the said um, voyage. We can see the targets and its um, particular positions on the radar. 
And here are the equipments or the radar example that are being used on board ship that is necessary when you are going to aboard the ship to okay. slide please. And that's it. Um thank you for listening and we hope that you learn something.